So you had that difficult period in hospital where, you know, they were they were giving you the diagnosis in quite a, a, a brusque way in a way. What was your predominant emotion at that time? My honest opinion, it all. You were um, angry, were you? Angry, oh, mm. very angry because the way they look at you, you know what I mean? Oh, well, it's this, that, and the other. To them, it's a job. Mm. I do appreciate that, I really do. And probably thinking about it now, I wouldn't have probably been so angry now. But at the time, you've just been told that you've got all this cancer and tumour and this, that, and the other. You don't want somebody sitting there saying, oh, no, you know, take your time. You've heard the word cancer. Nothing else registers, mm. nothing. What do you think would um, help in that situation, maybe? Uh... To make sure that you've got somebody with you when you're told. Mm -hmm. You know, my sister were outside the room. She could have said to me, do you want somebody? To... They did do after, but that particular time they never said to me, do you want somebody in here? At the time, to yeah. make it clear somebody can attend with you if yeah. they're available. Yeah, that I mean, my sensible. sister wanted to come to come in with me anyway. And, you know, obviously I said no at first, but then when they've told you and they put you in a room, yeah, it's only for a couple of minutes, but to you, it's a lifetime. Mm. You know, everything's going through your mind. You know what they're going to come through the door and say. You don't want to hear it, but you know, you've got a real good idea. And the family member can not only yeah. act as a, a source of support, but they would double check on what's being said. Yes, because you're not listening. Mm. You, you're not taking, you, you hear the word cancer and that's all you've heard. Yeah. That's all you, you'll hear all that time. Yeah. What were you given at that time then? Eventually, after she, she told me that and she says, get dressed and you go into another room, another nurse come in, she would love her. And all I kept saying to her, I'm going to die. And she said, no. Uh, you know, your prognosis is good, but I weren't hearing that. And I, I must have repeated myself, because, like, now, when I'm nervous, I tend to just ramble. Mm. My sister hit me and told me to shut up and listen to what they were telling me. And then she were giving me leaflets and booklets, and to me, they were just a piece of paper. Mm. I just wanted to get up and run anywhere. You know, but my legs wouldn't carry me. You wanted to escape yeah. from the yeah, situation? Yeah, I did, yeah. And I, I'm trying to sit, she's talking to me, and I'm trying to sit, thinking, now, which way did it come in to get out? I've got to get out of here. Mm. And to be honest with you, as soon as that door, she went out that door, I'd, I'd followed her and I'd gone. In an anxious situation, that instinct to run is actually quite natural. That yeah. fight or flight feeling that you should, you know, escape from it. Yeah. Maybe we should actually think about giving people who are under, you know, stress from the point of the diagnosis, a bit of a break from it for a while and call them back maybe at a later time, even later the same day? I, I, I think actually there ain't an easy time to be told it. Well, every time you do say it to, to that person, each individual is different. Um, but with me, I just wanted to escape. Yeah. I didn't want to know. I thought if I walked out the door, it was going to stay where it were because it weren't going to happen to me. I do agree with you. There's no easy way to do it because always somebody's going to be upset. But there's yeah. ways that the stress, the effect, can be minimised in a way. Now you mentioned about the leaflets. What's your view about the leaflets then? They can give you 50 leaflets at that precise moment and if it's anything like me, you just put them down. I mean at one time you could open my car and go under my seat and you'd find <laughs> well enough to read a book really. I don't think, they're just sort of giving me, well this, you know, and write this down. Do you really want to sit there and write like that? No. You just forget it, you know. There's a danger with any intervention, it's just being seen as something simple that will, you know, solve the situation, like a sticking plaster, where, uh, you know, it's the quality of the <coughs> innovation and also how meaningful it is for that person at that time. In other words, is it matched to you? Is it what you want? No, I It think, doesn't sound like that was what you wanted at that time. No, I, I think everybody's different and I understand that. Um, but at that time, I... I think it would have been better if they would have said, there's a, a room where you can go with your sister and talk, which they left us, and then this woman come in. But like, you just need to have that time to sort of register. We mm. are, you've ju you're just trying to take that in and the booming leaflets in your hand. And I know it's their job, and I know they haven't got time with everybody to sit down and talk to you. I know that, it's time and it's money, and that's the problem. 
Well, on that note, do you think spending time face to face with that clinician or just having your family member there as a source of support would be the way to go? Yeah, I think you need them both. Somebody to explain, you need to feel that you've got family or a friend or somebody that you trust, mm. let's say. Exactly. Listening to everything they're saying because you know you're going to come out. Well, I didn't till I got out the door. I hadn't heard a thing. No. Somebody who you trust and you feel that's on your side. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to... You don't... I mean, people don't want it sugar-coated. We don't get it sugar-coated. But you don't take it in. Mm. I mean, my sister has learned more through being with me, going for appointments, than she did when she was going through it. Because obviously, she said she was like me, she wasn't listening. Mm. So she made sure when she was in the room, because she knew I weren't going to remember to ask questions, mm -hmm. she asked the questions. Yeah. You know, I, I'd say to her, I'd get home and I'd say, what did he say? Mm. Well, he told you that. Well, what does that mean? And then she'd explain it to me. Oh, all right. <laughs>